Hello, and welcome to Surveyor Says, the podcast from the National Society of Professional Surveyors. Each week, we bring you fascinating guests that are involved in the profession of surveying. We cover a lot of ground, including Table Lay Talk with Gary Kent, Point of Order with the NSPS Joint Government Affairs Team, Future Focus, highlighting current and future leaders of the profession, and everything survey-related in between. Thanks for joining us here on the podcast, and hope you enjoyed listening to this episode of Surveyor Says. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Surveyor Says. Today, we're still delving into the candidates for the Young Surveyors Network, and our first uh, first interview today is with Jeanette Harley. Now, do you go by Jeanette? Do you go by Nettie? Which do you prefer? Uh, either one is fine. Um, Nettie's just a nickname that's been really stuck with me. Okay. Okay. Well, very good. I'm, usually I'm Tim or Timothy, but usually it's Timothy when I'm in trouble. So <laughs> I just didn't know how you felt about, okay, Jeanette, how are you feeling? I was like, ah, right. don't, don't want to be in trouble with anything. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you? Where do you, where do you reside, current jobs, and uh, just some of the activities you're into? So I am a, a Wisconsin professional licensed land surveyor. Um, I'm a sole proprietor of Harley Surveying LLC. I primarily uh, do boundary related surveying work. I subcontract with my partner, Eric Hogue. He's the owner of Trumark Surveying in Nielsville, Wisconsin. I currently have the position of vice president in our Wisconsin Young Surveyors Network. And I have been involved since its inception, kind of in the background, more or less, um, behind supporting Allison Tierney. Um, she's kind of been more the go-getter. Um, she's our current standing president for our Young Surveyor Network, and she's been influential in my attending um, the NSPS Young Surveyor me meetings every year since 2018. Except for right. 2020, of course, because yeah. the world shut down. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Well, and a little shout out to Allison. I've known Allison for several years now, and she, um, she f falls in that same line of great uh, female surveyors that have come out of Wisconsin. And uh, we're adding you to that, definitely to that list uh, behind Miss Van Horn and uh, Miss Pierce and, 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 and Allison. So we can, we can add, we can add Jeanette to that list as well. So mm -hmm. uh bunch of great ladies coming out of Wisconsin. Um, I guess, so with your involvement at the state level and now getting your feet wet in the national level, what do you see are goals that the national young surveyors should be engaged with? What should they be, be trying to move towards as far as of goals for the, for the group? So I have some, I guess, personal goals and like what I'd like to see the network do. Uh, my personal goal for the Young Surveyor Network is to seek out and encourage the upcoming leadership within the Young Surveyor Network and be a source of mentorship because I am close to aging out of the Young Surveyor Network myself. Um, it was very much exciting to see so many young surveyors involved in the NSPS committee meetings uh, this fall, and I would love to promote this to be the normal, especially in the fall setting for meetings. I feel like that's uh, more appropriate than the spring. Um, with the Young Surveyor Network taking over the primary responsibility for coordinating the student competition, I'd like to assist um, the Young Surveyor Network with establishing that model for the future and how that's going to look. Um, the Young Surveyor should be able to be to create this platform like a trickle down effect for all surveyors on how best to promote our profession. I feel like we've got the energy and the ideas. Um, a goal for the Young Surveyor Network, and I think all the leadership involved would agree, is it, it'd be nice to have all the states represented by at least one chapter or network. Exactly. Hear that, Illinois? You still need to step up. Come on now. <laughs> Keep bugging them. Well, I guess going along with that, then, um, you touched on some pretty good points that what, in your in your opinion, I mean, is the importance of that relationship between uh, the, the national office of NSPS and the young surveyors? I mean, it shouldn't be adult table, kitty table. It should be all professionals working together. So uh, 
how do you see that relationship making sure that that relationship stays uh, intact? Well, in kind of building off of talking about the fall meeting, I I feel like that was a good example of us, you know, individually having our time together, but then also collaborating together. It was a really good demonstration of the importance of having those young surveyors go to those meetings and be a part of the leadership and board meetings of NSPS so that they're they're having that voice. They're, ha they're listening to the leadership. Um, as I reported back to our state board, the young surveyors brought those fresh ideas and perspectives while the seasoned surveyors can share their experience and guidance, I think it's paramount that we keep this door open between the generations. The young surveyors need to have that voice and see new leaders elevated under this current NSPS leadership to preserve the legacy of our profession and also adapt to the changes. You know, we can't be stagnant in our top level leadership. You know, we got to keep it more fluid as these young surveyors grow up to incorporate those so it's a smooth transition and we're also being dynamic as a national society. Very well said. Uh, so I guess from, from, a, from a personal standpoint, uh, what are some personal goals? What I guess what personal satisfaction do you get out of being really engaged in this and really stepping up your involvement? I mean, like I said, you're a small business owner. You've already, you know, you, you've got uh, business and family commitments. You're making you're making an additional step to an even bigger commitment. Um, what drives you to want to do that? And I guess in order to explain that, I feel like I'll back up to when I started in this profession, I was right out of high school. There was not a lot of resources available for those who wanted to be in land surveying. It's like you, if you ask anybody that's kind of my age or experience level, they'll be like, well, even people older than me, they're like, I got into surveying kind of by accident. I mean, that's, I know my partner, Eric, can say the same thing. It just, it happened. He was offered a job and all of a sudden, yeah, now he's a surveyor. So it's like, fortunately, I had a really good um, NWTC instructor, Rick Van Gotham. And as was mentioned before, the politely pushy uh, Lisa Van Horn had a lot to do <laughs> with me getting involved in the local chapter and the state society. Um, without that push, I don't know if I would be as involved in the society. Um, and and now, I guess, in looking where I'm at right now, it's like soon I'm not going to be a young surveyor anymore either. So I, I don't normally seek out leadership. I pr prefer to be that encouragement and support of the, the upcoming leaders that I see. The Young Surveyor Network has done so much for our profession in a short time. I believe in the power and the influence that this network can have. Um, I guess my personal contribution, you know, whether I actually have the role of an officer or not, is just to assist and grow the impact of the NSPS Young Surveyor Network. Well said. Well said. Um, and yes, um, I I think Miss Van Horn doesn't realize. Well, maybe she does. Who knows? She's she is a Wisconsiner by the, <laughs> but uh, she she's pushed a lot of good people further in their careers, and uh, she is truly a role model. And uh, I'm glad to see another uh, another one that's that that somebody else that said that she's pushed somebody along, and uh, and look where you've look where you're at now. Which kudos to you. Right, um, and I, I think she's uh, literally pushed me at that first uh, meeting. <laughs> she's, she's that so, way, so. isn't she? Yeah, right. she's that way, isn't she? Yes, yeah, she is. Um, okay, well, I guess the last thing I would like to ask you is you're at this stage of your career. Like you said, you're right in that transition between a young surveyor and, and uh, aging out of that. But yet you're a small business owner. You've had, you've got several years under your belt. What do you see the future of surveying from your perspective? How are we? How, how does the future surveying look to you? And the timing of this interview is really interesting because um, just last week Eric and I got to interview two high school juniors at our local school, and it kind of re-inspired me to think about what to say to somebody interesting interested in becoming a surveyor and I, I feel like the future of surveying is very bright it's very wide open um, the surveyor plays a variety of roles 
on so many different levels. I mean, when you start talking about all the different avenues that you can be and still be under that title of surveyor, I mean, it's huge and it appeals to so many personality types, so many skill types. Um, we have cutting edge technology, but yet we still go play out in the woods. I mean, <laughs> it's we get to solve puzzles every day. It's, it's always new every day. Um, you can be diversified in your portfolio, or you could choose to be a specialized, you know, maybe you just do drone mapping. Um, you could be a drafter or strictly a field crew. You can be happy as a technician forever or pursue licensure. You could be an employee or um, like Eric and myself, you can be a small business owner or a larger company if you choose to establish that. Um, and notice uh, locally, we've lost six surveyors in our coverage area and the demand has only gone up. So the job potential wow. is just crazy right now. I mean, now more than ever is a time to think about a surveying or geospatial career. Oh, very good. Very well said. And uh, it's, uh, I got. I got to say that uh, your experience has um, made you wise, wise beyond your age. So uh, that's very, very well said. Um, we appreciate you coming on. We look forward to having a very good, very competitive uh, uh, vote for all the all the candidates. So, Jeanette, thank you very much. Regardless of what happens. I got a feeling we're going to be talking to you much, much more in the future. So uh, stick around, Thanks. folks. Stick, stick around. You're going to hear more from this young lady. All right. Thank you very <laughs> much, Tim. Thank you. Hello and welcome to another episode of Surveyor Says. This is once again our Young Surveyor Network edition and our next candidate for secretary is Miss Heather Keenan. And so how are you today, Heather? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. So we all, of course, we know your dad and uh, everything that Mentoring Mondays is doing and Diamondback's doing. What's Heather up to? Why don't you tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into surveying, current, what your current job is, and what's going on with, uh, with you and uh, the Nevada Young Surveyors? So growing up with the business, my summers at the beginning of my career consisted of a lot of going out in the field, doing the field work, mapping the field work, and researching for a lot of our jobs. So after graduating high school, I uh, went to college as a full-time student at Oregon Institute of Technology and it was going well until COVID hit March of 2020 uh. and I never ended up going back. I then transferred to Great Basin full-time and I worked full-time as well. So at the moment working full-time I am a project coordinator and project admin for our six boundary and topo crews. I handle both in town and out of town work for both of all of our crews. I am also the project setup person in QuickBooks, T-Sheets, which is our time tracking software, and Q-Factor, which is our project management software for the whole company. And occasionally I will help with proposals, billing, accounting, and I will step in for research that needs to be done as well. And of course, when I'm not working, I also spend <laughs> a lot of time being involved in Mentoring Mondays. And that position, I do the social media coordinating, and I keep up with the website. And when it comes to keeping up with, with the website, I spend a lot of time researching the state association websites mm -hmm. because we have an event page on the website so that anyone in the country can go to Mentoring Monday's website and they can see what's going on on these particular days in these particular states. And then as of last week, I am probably the youngest board member ever to be elected on the Southern chapter of uh, the Nevada Association of Land Surveyors, and my current position this year will be the director. Because of the recent bylaw changes in the state association um, that were made a couple years ago, our chapter positions are now open to anyone that's non-licensed in the land surveying profession. So 
Um, if you think about that, two thirds of our profession is made up of non-licensed professionals and the young surveyors. So doing the work in the rest of the profession is made up of the licensed professionals. So right now it's a great time for state associations to be able to make those changes so that younger generations can get involved earlier, such as myself. That's fantastic. And you're spot on that, uh, unfortunately, uh, you're right, that, that, that because there's so many uh, technicians and the, the non-licensed side of it doesn't mean that they're, they're not capable of doing these things. So kudos to you for uh, stepping up for the chapter and everything else. So uh, I'm hoping you have a little bit of free time for yourself. Occasionally. <laughs> Very good. Uh, okay, so going forward with the, the young surveyors, what goals do you think uh, between the, the state chapters and the, the, the national uh, young surveyors network, what do you think the goals should be going forward for the young surveyors really kind of as an overall group? So some of my goals are not only for YSN, but as NSPS. And I'd like to start getting the state associations to accept YSN as a chapter or even a committee. That's going to be extremely helpful for us to get more members involved. And I would also like to see the YSN state coordinators from all 50 states to show up to the spring and fall meetings as well. And the only way to do that is also to get support by the state associations. We need to make a market and promote y YSN more on the NSPS social media, as well as state associations, state social medias. And then also being involved in Mentoring Mondays, I see that we need a lot of uh, local and mentoring programs out there too. So I would love to keep Mentoring Mondays going for as long as we can, and hopefully we can get the support nationally. And we need to have the YSN support and volunteer time at local high schools and middle schools for outreach opportunities. Let's use the Get Kids Into Surveying for elementary schools and help promote trick star competitions and get YSM members to be a judge on their local future cities competitions. We just need to simply get out there more. And then I'm, as a national side, um, as we grow as a Young Surveyors Network, I'd like to get more state associations to support us so a few other things that we were working on in our Nevada Association and through Mentoring Mondays is to bring all 50 states together into a Zoom and start collecting brainstorm for outreach ideas and see what states are doing what and what's worked for each state. And to create an elevator pitch so that we have the one voice to market in the profession nationally. And so when that being said, when leaving the airport in Chicago after the fall meetings, um, we saw a huge banner leaving the Chicago airport for Boy Scouts. There should be no reason that not uh, that we're not advertising for nationally. It's a simple thing as running a billboard ad or even just have the state association runs an ad and we throw a YSN logo on there. So the communication and networking and all of that can grow as well from state to state and from national. Very good. Uh, yes, that yeah, you've hit on a lot of great points there. That I think that uh, uh, you know part of it comes back to uh, a profession that historically, uh, from the older generations, it's uh, just let me do my work and it'll it'll feed itself. And uh, unfortunately, you're you're right. We're not seeing that anymore, and uh, it's going to take a lot of work to to make sure that we're a lot more visible. Um, I want to. What's some of the main personal reasons you want to you want to delve even? I mean, you've got your hands full of so much stuff. You're going to delve even further uh, with trying to be an officer in the Young Surveyors Network. Uh, I guess as far as what what are your goals, both for the Young Surveyors and at the national level, and for Heather Keenan? So the main reason that I wanted to become a YSN officer is. The lessons learned from looking back into my experience and getting my name and opinion out there at such a young age to show those that you can have an idea and be involved in your state and national societies, even if you're not a licensed surveyor yet. Um, and for those that will never get a license, but still want to have a voice in the profession, 
your opinion as a future surveyor will have the same impact as those that are seasoned into the profession already. Uh, exactly. And I think that's it's so overlooked um, by the older generations. And obviously, uh, you're seeing it and you're you're feeling it that uh, there's so much to be for, for the, the younger generations and the technicians to offer whether they get licensed or not, there's just so much, there's so much expertise that, that is already there, but, um, but we just, we put this big, uh, stop sign on it. If you're not licensed, that's, you know, you're not valuable. And that's, that's, that's just not true. Um, I guess, so looking forward, uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on with technology, with young surveyors. It seems like there feels like some momentum. How do you feel about the future of surveying? Where do you see, how do you, well do you think the future uh, is going to be for the surveying profession? I definitely see the future of surveying to be heavily driven by technology, whether that be with drones or LIDAR, and how we apply the lessons between the old and the new will come together as technology changes. And the idea of working together will become stronger. Young surveyors need to make sure that we continue to adapt to technology because things will advance rapidly as we grow through our profession. Very good. Well, and I think something you hit on that uh, obviously between between yourself, your company, your your dad's philosophies, and everything we're trying to build. Um, one thing I think that I that I like hearing is that uh, companies really need to get behind their younger generations as well. That it's it's not just sending the old season surveyors to to the state conferences and to to various functions. Uh, it's people like yourself being, making sure that we get we get support for those those young surveyors uh, that are earlier in their career and have families and have other responsibilities that that, that need that need that little assistance need that support. So uh, I think you hit on a lot of great things there. Um, any last parting words for uh, for uh, our our voters out there to uh, to con consider you for a candidate? Um. No, just let's become it together as a group and let's communicate and get ourselves out there and not have the age defined of who we are as a profession. Let's get the old and the new together and let's have our national name and our national voice to us and not just say all the seasoned, all the young surveyors. Let's just come together as a group and say we the land surveyors. Exactly. Exactly. Well, there you have it. Heather Keenan, she's a, a candidate for the Young Surveyors Network secretary position. Um, well, you've, you heard it here that the, there's a lot of work that goes behind uh, the Mentoring Monday. So uh, check that out every week. And uh, if you have any ideas, suggestions uh, for Mentoring Mondays, I shoot them towards, towards Heather and all the stuff she's got going on there. So um, Heather, regardless of how things come out with the uh, with the election, uh, I think we're going to hear a lot more from you in the future. I would I would assume. Of course, I'm glad to be on here. Okay, very good. All right, the the ballots will be coming out shortly, and uh, but uh, uh, continue to to listen here for uh, all of the interviews, and uh, we'll catch up next time. Thank you. Hello and welcome to another episode of Surveyor Says, actually an episode within an episode. Uh, we're wrapping up our uh, what we're doing with the young surveyors and the candidates for the, the offices that are coming up. Uh, you've heard from the two vice presidential candidates and uh, we're wrapping up our third uh, candidate for the Young Surveyors Network secretary position. And today we're talking to Mr. Eric Salovich. Uh, actually, you know, you know, that's the nice thing, I guess, uh, you know, which would have been different from years past. Um, uh, proprietor as well and uh, of his own business, small business owner. So that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. I mean, it's been a, been a heck of a ride for you so far. 
Yeah, I'd say so. <laughs> More or less just kind of like holding on at this point, but that's a, a good problem to have, or so everybody says. I keep hearing oh, that. Sure. But... <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, and you know, uh, to catch the listeners up a little bit, we just we, uh, when we jumped on the call, you were talking about you just ran your plotter out of the first roll of paper, and uh, that's a lot of paper. That's a lot of, that's a lot of surveys. It was funny. So I started the business in March. Um, I'm up to four employees. Myself would be the fifth. And I remember when the service tech was here, he was like, do you want to order a second roll of paper? And I was like, look at this thing. It's huge. You know, I didn't, <laughs> you don't even think about it. You know, like working at the office over the years that stuff like that happens. But of course I did get an extra roll and had it sitting there and um, I was trying to make some plots and prepping the crew for tomorrow before this meeting and the paper runs out and I was like, oh, so... go nice through you're looking time. for the video and then you're like, I can figure this out. It's just the plotter and we got it done. Oh yeah. So Mr. Eric, tell us a little bit about, well, your current job, your current, uh, endeavor, um, what you're doing still with, uh, New Hampshire and the young surveyors and some of the activities that you're up to. Okay. Um, the business name is Northam survey. We're on Instagram. Check it out. Free plug. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. we are licensed in New Hampshire and Maine. We're right on the border of, of Maine and New Hampshire here in Dover. Um, it's a nice little seacoast ish type area. And we do our, we specialize or so we're, uh, the business model is geared towards utility surveys. Um, either that's gas line, Eversource, municipalities, that sort of things. Um, but we do do a lot of residential surveys. Um, I'm noticing a lot of the guys that work for me prefer the residential stuff and the smaller surveys. So I'm trying to keep a good balance of that and not go too one-sided, um, mostly for everyone's lifestyle and general happiness. Um, I really enjoy surveying and, you know, those small little camp lots and boundaries, those are so much fun to dig into, um, especially up here in the colonial states where I was just researching a parcel and, you know, got back to the early 1800s and, you know, reading some handwritten deeds and you got to print it and highlight it so that it comes in a little better. And um, that's all part of the job that is just great. Um, in New Hampshire, I have been part of the New Hampshire uh, Young Surveyors for a couple of years now, I've actually have passed the torch um, per se to Emily Hayes, uh, who is the current chairperson. Um, I've moved on and took the role of vice president within the association. So I'm starting that three or four year endeavor. Um, you go vice president, president elect, president then passed. Uh, I'm really excited about that. I've, I've learned a ton of, you know, connections within the association, um, people, friends, mentors, um, you know, what I've gotten out of volunteering has, you know, tenfold from not volunteering, I guess would be the only other option. And, um, it's been good. So vice president of the regular association. I'm still active within the New Hampshire Young Surveyors. Um, actually, this past fall, I went to the NSPS fall business meeting as the New Hampshire director, and I guess I'm still seen as the New Hampshire director, although I'm not. It's just Emily couldn't tra travel, so I took the spot. It's just kind of a shared responsibility. Um, and yeah, the, so at the fall business meeting, that's when the idea came up and the nomination came up for secretary. And it's kind of funny. I am like, when well, you think the word secretary, uh, I'm not very organized. I'm like scatterbrained. Ev everything's, you know, juggling a ball and keeping all these balls up. And I'm, I'm working on this and working on that. And, you know, I'm trying not to think about something else while I'm sitting here in front of you. But the only way to get better at something is to do it. So when I was asked to do the secretary role, I thought, 
you know, what a great opportunity, you know, not only can I get better at, um, you know, taking notes and taking minutes, but also being involved. And, you know, I'm a pretty loud person. <laughs> I, I, I speak my opinion very cl clear. Um, and I think that's good when you get into these associations to not be afraid to voice your opinion and not let how other, but still understand when other people are speaking and that sort of thing. And, um, yeah, I guess that's kind of why I'm, I'm going for secretary. Sure. Sure. Well, that's awesome. Well, I, I guess and um, one question that I have, uh, is how important, I mean, you, you now have a foot in both the state association and your, and obviously your long-term, uh, involvement with the young surve young surveyors in New Hampshire. How important do you see is the relationship between the young surveyors and not just at the state level, the 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 state of uh, state association, but the national association? How how important is that relationship in, in building some synergy between the young surveyors and us old guys? Well I know I feel our state society does a very good job of this. Uh, it's it's not even, and you know, NSPS does too, and that's been coming a long way, I think, with uh, Denver's involvement and participating in the ex executive committee meetings. And we're working here in New Hampshire towards changing some of the bylaws so that the young surveyor um, position would have a seat at the table, per se, at the executive committee within the state. Um, those things are coming, and I think we're not two separate entities that the, the young surveyors now are the association and the, the, the association is the young surveyors without each other. It, it's, it's really nothing, right? It's, it's nice that the young surveyors have developed. It, it's unfortunate that it had to come to a point where there was such a big gap um, where you had to kind of develop a young surveyors committee. I think it's great because it gives people the opportunity to step into a leadership position within an organization without the burden of, you know, being the president of the whole association, you know, being the chairperson of the young surveyors, you know, that carries its weight and it is, is certainly a role that needs to be taken seriously. But at the end of the day, it's not the end of the world if you mess something up or, you know, you, you do this or do that. And I, I learned that being the chair within the young surveyors, um, you know, just everybody cares, but nobody cares. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, there's, there can be a lot of that. And it only, things only push forward as well as the leadership pushes things and gets people involved and helps kind of keep beating that drum. So no, you, you're, you're right. And you can't be afraid to, to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing. We learn from our mistakes. So, uh, no, I, 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 I like where you're, you're headed with that because it is, it's important that, uh, all of the, all the generations of surveyors are, are, are contributing in one way or another. Um, I guess the next thing would be is, you know, I, you've kind of touched on it, but is there really some personal reasons? I mean, you've got so much going on with your, in your life, uh, with your business, with the state stuff, taking on one more challenge, uh, as a, as a national officer. Yeah. Um, some would say my, my wife included that, what, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> I justified it to myself that I'm I'm not running for vice president. Uh, the nice part about the secretary role is that it's a kind of a non-commit. You know, you're in for a year, but you're not locked in for this three or four year commitment. Um, right now, I'm beginning that path within the state, so I know I'm tied up within the state for the next four years. Um, I do really enjoy the national level and seeing things and going to those meetings and being a part of that. I'm going to be there anyways. I'm going to strive to be there anyways. Um, with this position, it gives me the opportunity to definitely be there. Um, like I said, you know, the torch is passed here in New Hampshire. So for me to continue my involvement at 
the national level, it would mean taking on some more responsibility and taking on another role. And, you know, that's something that I'm fired up about and I'm interested in doing. I mean, the future of the profession is just so important and so bright. Um, you know, I'm trying my hardest to be a leader in that uh, locally and in the New England area. And there's no reason why I can't be a leader nationally. So. Very good. It, that, that's that's plenty of reasons. That's uh, and uh, it, it's 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 admirable that you want to just like I said, just keep put it, pushing yourself out there into more and more things. So, I guess the last question I have for you is the future of surveying. Well, from your perspective and as a small business owner, where do you see it? Is it is the future bright? Is uh, it concerning? Where do you think the future of surveying is going? Uh, I think the future is very bright for land surveying um, <clears throat> and not with like the decline of qualified professionals that we're kind of dealing with um, nationally eventually is going to have some repercussions that's going to bounce back. You know, as you create these positions where surveyors are worth more then more people are going to start surveying so being on the front part of that wave of technology and understanding technology and um you know with the drones and the scanning and imagery and even robotics and that sort of thing being on the front edge of that it's really opens a door uh, for my generation to be leaders of the next generation and getting them right into that. Like today, <clears throat> I we got a last minute large Alta survey come in and we're expecting to get four inches of snow up here on in <laughs> the Northeast. And this is a, it's a mobile home park of just acres and acres of pavement and driveway, everything that's visible from the sky. So we, I sent a guy out there just to do a flight. We just fly it, collect all the, we're just for edge of pavement, horizontally located. And then we can traverse in February when there's snow on the ground and just locate the buildings. So having the, uh, the ability to use these different technologies to solve these problems uh, is, is a lot of fun. Well, you, you hit the key there is it's the technology and, and having, Having the ability to wrap our heads around it, um, I think there's. I think we're really setting ourselves up for a nice revolution of of the young people, the younger generations, really, really stepping up and 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 taking charge within the profession. So, no, I that's those were all great answers, and uh, well, I wish you the best of luck, and uh, we'll see how everything shakes out because the ballots will be coming out shortly, and. Uh, Hopefully we'll, uh, well, bottom line is all three candidates. I don't think we can, it's going to be a win, win, win all the way around. Cause no matter what happens, all three of them are going to be involved going down the road. I can guarantee you that. So Eric, thanks for joining me. And, uh, he said, we'll, uh, I, I get a Like I said, I got a sneaky suspicion that we'll, we're going to cross paths and be, uh, be talking here again, uh, in the near future. So, yeah, that'd be great. Um, I'd love to sit down. I know with, Nolan <laughs> being a young business owner and um, James as well as a young business owner, getting a, a table together with those guys would be a lot of fun. Absolutely. And that's uh, 2022 is going to be an interesting year. So uh, buckle up. It's going to be fun. So um, that'll do it for this week on uh, surveyor says now keep, uh, Keep uh, keep coming back around because we're going to have some more uh, great interviews. We've got a couple of interesting things. In fact, something up uh, in your neck of the woods, um, Eric, that we're talking to a firm that was actually involved with the Big Dig several years ago and lessons learned from uh, <laughs> from utility locations. So uh, we'll be looking for that one pretty soon. But oh, that'll be a fun uh, episode. Uh, an it will project. <laughs> Yes, looking forward to that conversation. So uh, 
subscribe wherever you listen to your podcast and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. You've been listening to the Surveyor Says Podcast, brought to you by the National Society of Professional Surveyors. If you have any questions about today's episode or any other topic, please email us at info at nsps.us.com, and we are here to help. Visit our website, nsps.us.com, to learn more about our association, the programs we administer and support, our sustaining members, and information about future episodes of Surveyor Says. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Spotify, as well as our podcast host, Podbean. And remember, it's a great day to be a surveyor.